Hey guys, Pat Precourt here. Welcome, welcome to this week's Friday Coffee Break. Great to see you here again as always. You know, an outstanding question came in after our, our, our last week's time together. Uh, we talked a lot about building our why and things like that, but the question was, hey Pat, there's a lot of average out there today, mediocrity. What does it take for someone to go from average, mediocre, to true greatness? So I want to talk about that here today, okay? Um, you know, I, I've always seen this, and it's what I truly believe. There's three primary components to greatness, and I'm going to talk about one of them today. So the, the primary components like this, if you want to become great at whatever it is you do, number one, you have to do something that you're truly passionate about. Number two, you have to do it in such a way that it brings great value to this world, to this universe, and that's how we get rewarded with thank you notes, right? And thirdly, and this is one that's so wildly overlooked, but this is what truly separates good from great and it's having a personal code of honor a personal code of honor is when you're stripped of everything else when everything's peeled away and you're left it's what you stand for this is your impact on people around you this is your legacy this is how you live a life without regrets that's what a personal code of honor does you know when we're put in challenging positions and emotions go up what do you think happens? Why do you think we make poor decisions under pressure oftentimes? Because as emotions go up, intelligence goes down. So what if you had a set of laws, a set of rules that you lived your life by, so when you're put under pressure, guess what? There was default positions, the decisions were made, you would not falter. You wouldn't break your core values. Code of honor is the laws that we live by, our own personal laws that we live by. So an example, picture a metaphor of a second baseman, okay? Uh, and whoever, any of you who play baseball, you know exactly what I'm talking about here, okay? You're at second base. You got a base runner on first. You got a base runner on third. You got one out. You know if the ball's getting hit to your left, you're not even worrying about the third base runner. You're automatically going to the second baseman to the first baseman for double play. If the ball gets hit to your right, depending on where it goes, you're going to look down at third base runner, right? as you're preparing to either throw to second or first, depending on what you hear from your mates. But those decisions are already made. That's what a code of honor, code of conduct does for you and I. Now, why do we not have them? One simple reason. We don't like being held accountable. We don't like being held in a disciplined capacity. But here's the truth of it. To the degree that we're not willing to be held accountable for what we know is right, is directly relative to a lack of love we have for ourselves. And I know that's hard to accept. But hell, if you know something's good for you and you refuse to be held accountable to do it for you, there's a little piece missing inside. So, you know, I want to bring this back to how I use it. Um, I have a code of honor for myself, especially as it relates to my family. Okay? My family is very important to me. One of the things I have as a personal code of honor, because I surround myself who expect more of me than I do of myself. That bring me up. And you know what that does? That surrounds me with people that I respect, love, and trust that hold me accountable each day. And you know what that does? That attracts more people like them and pushes away the downers in my life. And I, quite honestly, I can't be surrounded by those people. You know what I'm talking about. People bring you down. They take shots at you. They sarcastically joke about you. Quite honestly, bullshit. They don't deserve to be in your life. You don't deserve that type of behavior. So one of my codes on are surrounding. I surround myself intentionally with people that see more in me that I love and honor and trust and that will bring me up. Okay, another one has to do with our family, that our family has no exit clauses. You know what? I got a wife of 21 years, I got a 17-year-old boy, I got a 13-year-old girl, and I got a 9-year-old girl. You think we all always see eye to eye? Hell no. But that doesn't mean that we don't always honor each other's spots. You know, here's a little sign I keep up in the house here. Family rules. Help each other. Be thankful. Know you are loved. Pay with hugs and kisses. Try new things, be happy, show compassion, be grateful, dream big, respect one another, live out loud, laugh out loud. Okay, that's how our family rolls, and we're allowed to hold each other accountable to these rules. So, ladies and gentlemen, greatness starts with you. And when you strip everything else back, the only thing left are your actions, and your actions represent 
your code, the standards that you're willing to accept in your lives. Listen, this has been this week's Friday Coffee Break. Love you guys. Love to hear your comments below. Peace.